Welcome back to Distributed Systems and Blockchain in the News. My name is Thomas Bocek and this is a short weekly summary of interesting news that is relevant for my Distributed Systems and Blockchain lecture at the Eastern University of Applied Sciences here in Switzerland. So the first article is about simplicity and I love simplicity. The author reports on a podcast. It's the following article here. So he reports on a podcast that emphasizes the importance of simplicity in cloud infrastructure for startups. Instead of complex setups like Kubernetes, he uses single server, allowing him to focus on building great products and achieving a product market fit, which is quite important for startups. And while enterprise level companies may need more complex infrastructure for compliance and large teams, most early stage startups don't require such complexity from the start. For small teams, simple infrastructure, such as a simple VM or Docker with Docker Compose, can be more than sufficient. He also mentions two examples that he recently encountered. The one project used 20 to 30 Lambda functions. It's the following project here where he gives an example. And uh, he also used SQS and also other AWS features, creating unnecessary complexity, resulting in painful debugging and deployment. In hindsight, it would have been better to use a Node.js container, he concluded. And another project uh, there, he relied on Kubernetes and his team spent more time managing infrastructure than developing features. And modern servers offer a lot of power that startups can use without resorting to overlay complex solutions. The focus should remain on creating a solid product, not on infrastructure complexity, which can be scaled as needed once the company grows. That's his conclusion here at the end. The next article is about recent additions to AI tools in Mozilla Firefox. And in this article here, the author is unhappy about this AI feature and he feels that Mozilla is spending time on AI features rather than on other features. Uh, for example, they abandon the server, the Rust-based browser engine. Firefox-based browsers like LibreWolf or FloorP, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, offer privacy-focused and customizable options, attracting those who want a Firefox experience without the added complexity or AI hype. Then the article explains the difference between those forks. Libre Wolf, for example, emphasizes privacy with default settings like HTTPS only, uBlock origin and no telemetry. However, its strong security can make browsing inconvenient, especially websites that frequently trigger CAPTCHA challenges. FloorP, a uh, browser created by a Japanese community, offers a more flexible UI and built-in vertical tabs, but lacks LibreVol's privacy enhancements. Zen, another alternative inspired by Arc, features vertical tabs, a sidebar and unique UI designs, though it is still in early alpha stages. Each browser has its strength, providing Firefox users more tailored privacy respecting options. I'm personally looking forward to these new AI features and I enabled them immediately. Um, so the chatbot feature, for example, this is the following feature here. So I have here a uh, a menu where I can summarize, simplify the language or quiz me. So we'll try that. 
and uh, it injects the prompt and here it says please provide the answer and i'll move to the next question after you respond um probably i won't not use it but what i think it's nice is summarize or simplify the language if some uh, something is too complicated you can make it easier and then claude or ChatGPT or mistral will try to break it down for you so very nice um i immediately tried it however uh, one thing i noticed is that local large language models they are not supported to be fair local large language models they are much worse than models like claude like this here ChatGPT or mistral but i enjoy experimenting with them and I'm not saying these alternatives, uh, Zen, Libre, Wolf, or Floor P, they are not good. Uh, I'm also using Libre Wolf, for example, on my MetaQuest 3. And uh, compared to Google Chrome, I think Mozilla's approach could be more balanced, which does not force users into specific services from a single company. So I'm more positive about this AI feature than the author in this article. Another point is that web search is going to be significantly impacted by AI advancements. Search engines like Kagi.com, uh, for example, um, in my opinion, already provide better results. And there's also perplexity which is a meta search engine aggregating the results and combining them with those large language models. And this could affect Google's dominance on search. And it's important to note that in 2024, 81% of Mozilla Foundation's income comes from Google, which pays to have Google as Firefox default search engine. And if search behavior shifts towards AI power tools, this could also have a financial implication for Mozilla. The last article is about Ethereum. Uh, it's about the upgrade. So the Ethereum uh, developers are considering splitting the upcoming Pectra upgrade, which aims to enhance the network's efficiency and scalability into two phases. The first phase could potentially launch by February 2025, with developers aiming for a quicker rollout if the upgrade is divided. The upgrade combines the Prague, uh, which focuses on the execution layer, and Electra, which focuses on the consensus layer. Um, it, it combines these two upgrades. Concerns were raised during the developer meeting that delaying the first phase beyond June 2025 could be seen as a failure. The decision to split the upgrade comes from its complexity, with smaller forks posing less risk. And if you're curious about this developer meeting, uh, this is also on YouTube and uh, I also provide the link in the slides. The final decision on whether to split the Pectra upgrade will be made during the next Ethereum all core developers meeting on September the 19th. And the most interesting feature that comes with the upgrade, in my opinion, is the Ethereum improvement proposal 3074. Uh, this proposal introduces two new Ethereum virtual machine operations, Auth and AuthCall. And these operations allow third party transaction sponsorship. Um, allowing other entity to pay gas costs associated for a user's transaction and batch transactions or transaction bundling. Finally, this improvement allows for a much better user experience for Ethereum wallets 
and I built systems that uh, worked around this issue, but resulted in a complex off-chain system. So I'm really looking forward to this feature and I hope they deliver it quickly. As I mentioned, the meeting will be on the 19th of September and there we see how the roadmap will look like.